कृष्णा टॉक्स अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट आउटकम्स आर नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट कर्मण्य वादि कारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचित यू हैव ओनली टू डू योर ओन वर्क यू हैव नो राइट टू द फ्रूट्स और आउटकम्स ऑफ इट व्हाट वी आर रियली टॉकिंग अबाउट इज द ऑपोजिट ऑफ कृष्णा कृष्णा इज सेइंग इज दैट द मींस आर इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट यू कैन नॉट अचीव अ ग्रेट आउटकम बाय एम्प्लॉइंग सब prime or sub optimal means bigger lesson that krishna is trying to draw out is to distribute between a job and a vocation many entrepreneurs say that it took me 30 years to become an overnight and while you you can get injured you can also die the world is renewing itself uh, again it will be another uh, crop of entrepreneurs ready to meet the new challenges of the 21st and the 22nd century <laughs>
or EPS or EBITDA, I think it's going to be tough. But the way the world is sort of moving forward, I think it's going to be essential. Shantanu, if I look from an individual's point of view, from an aspiring uh, entrepreneur or from a startup founder, you're saying, uh, the Gita says, don't look at the outcome, look at your, what you're doing and how you're doing. And most of the entrepreneurs or the startup founders tell you that it's their passion, they want to do it for their passion. But when so much has changed, there's so much self-doubt, can I do it? I, I mean, forget outcome. I don't even know if the effort I'm doing now is really worthwhile. Am I going to get it? How do we, you know, how do we address this self-doubt? If you're not looking at the outcomes, if we don't have a target, how do we then put in our 100% with the passion, uh, not knowing that if this is going to work or not, when you're confused? I think, you know, confusion and doubt, we've all gone through this at some point of time in our lives, right? When we were choosing our first job, when we were deciding, you know, which girl I should marry or not, or deciding what work should I do. Uh, and I think the beauty of Krishna's wisdom is that it is so simple. For example, uh, let's go a little deeper into, you know, very fundamental question that you raised, uh, the nature of doubt. Like, why do doubts come in our minds? Doubts come in our mind because we feel that we might fail in what we do. So when somebody goes up on stage, they become speechless because they are afraid of failure. Uh, businesses don't uh, take risks or don't do the right things because they are not sure they might uh, succeed or not. Again, if you really look deeper on, into it, it's really focusing on uh, what is going to happen next. Am I going to succeed? Am I going to fail? And that sort of leads to a vicious circle of self-doubt. If, for example, uh, you, were, you didn't care what happened to you, you you said, I'm going to enjoy working on this particular business plan or I'm going to enjoy working on creating this new marketing strategy, right? The doubt will simply go away. There will not be a thing called doubt because you enjoy the process of doing what you're doing. If you're a marketing manager, you enjoy the process of creating awareness for consumers. If you're a finance professional, you enjoy the act of you know, putting your finances, etc. in order. So I think the, the bigger lesson that Krishna is trying to draw out is to distinguish between a job and a vocation, right? So I think the way we are structured running for, uh, you know, uh, economic outcomes for each one of us, um, I think we've got into this vicious circle that we think of work as work. If, for example, we banish the word work from our dictionary, and replace that with vocation or hobby, I think a lot of these self-doubts will actually uh, go away. Right. Uh, but you know, uh, things have changed so much uh, after the COVID pandemic. We have seen stark differences where SMEs, uh, MSMEs have really struggled. They may be passionate. They may feel that we have to serve uh, our customers. We have a purpose. Our business has this pur purpose to service something. but. Uh, you know, there have been outages from suppliers. They're not being able to uh, make ends meet and many of them have shut down. On the other side, you see these technology uh, startups or you see these unicorns that have an idea, just an idea and they're thriving and they're growing. So for um, startup founders and for, um, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs, what, what should be the seed of their desire? Yeah, passion, yes, but what should they, what should they want to do? A business that fulfills, uh, you know, uh, a need and a service that is required or something you build up and then you get great, great valuations and then you sell up because we are seeing this, you know, insane valuations for some of these technology startups that have uh, uh, listed on the bourses and, you know, uh, people think, yeah, this is what has to be done. This is what business is. I think it's a question of uh, what role models we adopt in society. Uh, not for a moment I'm saying that some of these technology starts are doing a phenomenal job. I think to list on the bourses, uh, no matter what your valuation, is a phenomenal achievement for any business or any entrepreneur. But I think in society, if those were the only role models uh, that we worship, that we put a halo around, naturally the lessons that we are going to draw out from there is a lesson that I want to become rich overnight. 
right? Uh, maybe my business idea, if it didn't get, you know, an X or a Y valuation, I'm a, I'm going to be a failure, right? Uh, so I think the the, the problem is uh, in drawing these lessons out of these startups. But if you really look deeper into many of these startups, um, there is a saying that, you know, uh, many entrepreneurs say. Uh, that it took me 30 years to become an overnight success, right? Um, so if you, what we are seeing today is this massive uh, valuation that they are enjoying the moment in the sun. But going back, uh, all the struggles that they went through, uh, and you know, they, these are 10 year old companies, they're 20 year old companies, they're 30 year old companies. They've had their moments of near death experience. They've had their moments of doubt, despair and delusion. So I think every entrepreneur, no matter what has to go through it, uh, in your life cycle of your journey as an entrepreneur, it could be that you start with a bang and then you face the challenging situations as some of the tech meltdown Anisha is teaching us today. Uh, you know, uh, in the, on the NASDAQ, uh, tech stocks have tumbled 50, 60, 80, 90 percent. So some of those businesses are now going to face the challenge of how do they answer back to their employees, customers, investors and uh, other stakeholders. I think the bigger lesson out here is that struggle um, is a part of life. And if we were to also banish the word struggle and look at it as a challenge, I think things are going to become very, very clear for uh, some of our SME entrepreneurs who no doubt have faced an impossible situation uh, in, 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 in the COVID scenario. And that sort of brings me to the fact that uh, COVID was war. In war, you you can get injured, you can also die. Uh, so businesses have died uh, during the, the war and we've had a terrible uh, sort of death and destruction. Uh, but the world is renewing itself uh, again. So there's going to be another uh, crop of entrepreneurs ready to meet the new challenges of the 21st and the 22nd century.